Shalom, I give all undergoing praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rokakodash, I give double honors to our apostles and elders, great millstone, salutations to all you to say, I can push this word across the four corners of the world. And the title of this lesson had the Most High cast away his people, and that's referring to the Israelites, who today are known as the so called Negroes, Latinos, Hispanics, and Native Americans. But according to the scriptures, according to the Holy Bible, according to our Father, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and his unbegotten son, Yahweh Shai, we are the biblical Israelites. And we had a bonded agreement with the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through his laws, statutes, and commandments. That we was going to keep them, we was going to be blessed upon all these other nations, we was going to be on the top. But if we broke that binding agreement or that covenant, then we was going to be set low under these nations. That they was going to become the head and we was going to become the tail. So throughout this whole process, if you are looking at it from a carnal outside view, especially if you are another nation, you will see the predicament of the biblical Israelites in today's time. And you'll be like, man, we got them. We got them where we want them at, at a low predicament, at the bottom of the total pole. But it's a divine intervention that's happening in this earth right now that Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, he's awakening his hopeful elect to come back into their way of remembrance. And that leads to the book of Baruch, the fifth chapter and the fifth verse, how it says, that the children gathered from the west unto the east by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the remembrance of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And that spiritual awakening is happening right now in today's time, right in front of the eyes of these other nations to pursue nothing but hatred, oppression, and misfortune upon us. And this is Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, the 43rd verse. The stranger that's within thee should get up above thee very high. So that's talking about these other nations. And thou should come down very low. And that's talking about the biblical Israelites. You look at any type of situation around the world. If the spirit bear witness that we are the children of the Most High, according to the book of Romans, the 8th chapter, you will see that the Israelites are at the bottom. That stigma is on us, which means that curse is on us. It's a spiritual curse. No matter how we look amongst these other nations, and that's a part of the curse as well, that we was going to be scattered across the four corners of the world, pursuant to the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter and 64th verse. In secular history, they would call it diaspora or diaspora, which means the scattering. And that's talking about the scattering of the Israelites that's going to be spread throughout the whole four corners of this earth. And that's about us breaking that binding agreement, that contract, that covenant with our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. So these other nations, they see the type of situation that we are in as a total people, and they feel like, man, we got them. Which leads me to the book of Ezekiel, the 36th chapter and the first verse. Also, the son of man prophesy unto the mountains of Israel and say, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord power, because the enemy has said against you, aha, even the ancient high places are ours in possession. So these other nations, those are our enemies. Pursuant to the book of Psalm, the 83rd chapter, how it talks about, for lo, thy enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up their head. And that tumult goes into commotion. They're all having a conspiracy theory. They are conspiring together, meaning they are breathing together in their different meetings, these different summits that they have about how to continue to oppress the nation of Israel, the biblical Israelites. They keep you at the bottom and keep them in that high status. Because they know once that we are in that high status and it's over for them as rulership. So they come up all types of ways. They come up with all types of sellouts of our people to continue to get us further astray from Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. So that's a part of them making that tumult, that commotion, that conspiring together to keep us at the bottom. So when they see us now as a people, that's what they are saying. Aha. And you go to the word aha right here. It goes into like an imitating a cry of joy. Glorifying over an enemy's misfortune. So that's how these other nations are. They are glorifying themselves over the downfall of us as a people. Because these other nations have became rich, very wealthy off the slave labor of the Israelites. You think about the New York Stock Exchange and you see how just big and powerful they are now. But you go into the history of that, you so-called Negroes was the first stock for them to be where they are at now. You look into these different prestigious colleges and universities around the world, 
that came off the blood, sweat, and tears of the Israelites. So these other nations, they were like, aha, meaning they got us. They got us what they want us. But that's what they think because they're not spiritual enough to know that Yahweh Bashim al Shai has a certain remnant of the Israelites that's going to come back into their way of remembrance. He's going to stir up those pure minds. And they're going to remember themselves in the land of their captivity. And that's happening right now in front of the midst of all these other nations. And this is the book of Isaiah, the 22nd chapter and the 18th verse. He will surely violently turn and toss you like a ball into a large country. And that's talking about the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, when he got very upset with us for committing adultery on him. Because you go into the book of Jeremiah, the 6th chapter, the 2nd verse, he is likened the daughter of Israel or the daughter of Zion as a comely and delicate woman. So us as a people, the Israelites, are like a woman to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. So by us breaking that binding agreement, going back to that covenant, that contract, we start slipping with the guise of these other nations, start following their customs, their ideologies. And that further estrayed us from Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. So as a man, of course, you're going to get mad if you see your woman sleeping around on you. You open the door, you see another man in your home sleeping with your woman. So that's why the Most High got furious with us. As it says in the book of Proverbs, the sixth chapter, for jealousy is the rage of a man. So how much more than Heavenly Father Yahweh send his chosen people to be sleeping with these other gods? So that's why he surely valley toss us like a ball into a large country. Hence the transatlantic slave trade. And you go into like a transatlantic slave trade map, you will see all those different arrows from one end of the earth to the other which pursues through biblical prophecy. Deuteronomy in the 28th chapter and the 64th verse, how it's going to be scattered across the four corners of the world. So it says, He will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. There shall thou die, and there the chariots of the glory shall be the shame of thy Lord's house. So we became like the astonishment, that proverb, that byword amongst these other nations. It says in the book of Ezekiel that we're going to become like a reproach a mocking to all these different countries. That's why they make fun of us. That's why they exploit us into the media and they get paid for it. Just look at the NBA and the NFL. Who you mostly see in that? It's Jake. It's our people. When you see these different owners of these particular teams where they have no type of experience in playing basketball or football, but here you are, you saying that they are the owners. And those are wealthy men. But you see the players who are mostly consist of Jakes, but being wealthy, that's where it's at. And that goes right back to the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, how it says that the enemy or the stranger should get above thee very high. So that's why we're in this predicament as a total people. And going back to the book of Isaiah, the 22nd chapter, it says, Surely the heavenly father will violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. So that's the Heavenly Father Yahweh showing his anger and his rage upon us as a people. That's how much hell and fury he put on us as a people. He has swallowed up Israel. He has swallowed up all her palaces. He had destroyed his strongholds and had increased in the daughter of Judah mourning and limitation. You see, a lot of our people are prone to these different sicknesses and diseases. And that leads to their deaths. Look at the homicide rates against Jake in this country. Look at the social injustices happening to us as a people in this country, America. And just really around the world as well. But through the midst of all this, the beautiful thing about it, the hope we let, that's like the best come up story that anybody can ever tell. And that's your how about Shin Al Shah pouring out his spirit again upon his hopeful we let, coming back into their way of remembrance. Stand upon our feet and remember ourselves and our captivities. And this is the book of Malachi, the third chapter, and the 17th verse. And they shall be mine, said the Lord of hosts, meaning the elect. And that day would I make up my jewels. And you go to the word jewels, it goes into a peculiar treasure, value, property. And again, going back into the book of Psalm, the 83rd chapter, how it says how these other nations begin with the elites of Esau, Edom, how they have taken crafty counsel against our people. And consulted against thy hidden ones. You go into the hidden ones, it goes into the most highest treasure. Because two thirds of our people, you so called Negroes, Latinos, Hispanics, and Native Americans, the ones of our people want to follow the fashion of this world, they actually want to stay here and they're comfortable in their captivity, they are already compromised by Esau Edom. 
They are already following the image of the beast. They're pretty much done away with as a people. But that's why Yahweh Bashim Yahushai has reserved a certain few, a select few. And that's going into his hidden remnant, his chosen. And those are those precious jewels right here. And it says, and I will spare them as a man spared his own son that served him. So, you know, as a father, you will have honor upon your son as you see that he's respecting you. He's showing you much gratitude. So that's how the hopefully elect is in the eyes of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through his own begotten son, Yahweh Shai. So Lord willing, that's us. And we're coming back into that way of remembrance and that Yahweh Bashim Al Shai is going to redeem us in these last days. Which leads me to Romans 11 chapter in the first verse. I say then, have Yahweh Bashim Al Shai cast away his people? Because you would think the story of the Israelites, how we just became as a low people, we was deprived of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. We was following the ways of these heathen customs, and we became like natural brute beasts here. But the divine intervention came with Yahweh Bashem Yahweh giving us that breath of life. We're becoming revived again through the Spirit by the holy calling of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh to know His laws, statutes, commandments, and having this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding being programmed into us. So we're being like reprogrammed again. And now we are standing upon our feet, becoming those new creatures in Yahweh Shai. So to answer that question, had the Most High cast away his people? Meaning no, because at the end of the day, it goes back to that remnant of the children of Israel. So it says, the Most High forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Yahweh Bashem Yahushai had not cast away his people, which he foreknew. When you go to this word foreknew in the Greek, And just to get to the point, it says to have knowledge beforehand to foreknow of those whom God elected to salvation, to predestinate. And who's that talking about? You read the book of Romans 11 chapter in the seventh verse, the same chapter that we are in. It says, what then? Israel had not obtained what she's seeking for, but the election had obtained it. So the election is coming back into that knowledge. So those are the ones that Yahweh Bashim al is looking at as for new. Those are going to be the ones that be elected to salvation. The hopeful elect. So he has not cast away all his people. Pursuant to the book of Zechariah, the 13th chapter, two thirds of our people are going to be cast away. But they're going to come back into the ones of our people, the Lord willing, that's us, that make it on this side. In the kingdom of heaven, two thirds of our people the ones that did not want to serve you, how about Shem Yahweh on this side? They're going to come under the loins of the elect. And that fulfills the prophecy how it says that all Israel should be saved. But it starts off with the Most High's predestinated ones, his elect, that's going to be elected to salvation. And that leads me to the book of Micah, the seventh chapter, and the 18th verse. Who is a power like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity? So when you pardon if iniquity, meaning you are releasing us. We're being released out this westernized mentality. Our defiled bodies, because this flesh is like a prison to our spirits. We're coming back into those old ways. And that's by coming to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. His program, his ways, his agenda. And that's when the Heavenly Father Yahweh sent his own begotten son Yahweh Shai to release the hopefully let out this prison hole. He's like our spiritual bells buzzman. So it says, Who is a power like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? Going right back to those chosen few that valued property, his peculiar treasure, the elect of the nation of Israel. That's what it's all about. And it says, He retained it not his anger forever because he delighted in mercy. So even though we played the harlot and committed whoredoms with these other nations and their gods, Yahweh Bashim is still going to receive us unto himself as the hopeful elect. It says in the book of Isaiah, the 14th chapter, that I will have mercy upon Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them back in their own land. So right there alone is proven that the Most High is not going to retain his anger forever because he delighted in mercy. And it says he would turn again. He would have compassion upon us. He would subdue our iniquities. 
and thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. So that's what these other nations are not expecting. Because when it says, aha, they have their feet upon our nets. And they think it's going to be forever. But whether our people believe it or not, these other nations admire us. And of course, you know, it's behind closed doors. They envy our creativity, the way we excel in academics, our different inventions, our God-given talents and abilities that we showcase in these different sports. Because these other nations, they look at us as those superheroes. And each superhero have some type of weakness or kryptonite. And what's our kryptonite? According to the book of Romans, the sixth chapter, the wages of sin is death. So beginning with the elites of Esau, Edom, and trickling on down to these other nations, they give us that third life culture, that gay culture, trap music, black culture, that homosexual agenda. They give the women of our nation that women's liberation, women's empowerment, that feminist movement. And they groom our children at a young age because they know that children are more impressionable. So they are all social engineering to this Babylonian way of life. Those are those jizz, snares, and traps, these different devices that these elites, beginning with Esau, Edom, and these other nations, have set upon us as a people. As it says in the book of Psalm, the 83rd chapter, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may no more be in remembrance. So again, verse 19, he will turn again, he will have compassion upon us, he will subdue our iniquities, and thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Verse 20, thou will perform the truth to Jacob and the mercy to Abraham, which thou hast sworn unto our fathers from the days of old. So that divine interruption is happening right now in this day of time, right in the midst of our enemies. They see that great spiritual awakening happen amongst our people, putting back on those beautiful garments. As it says in the book of Isaiah, the 52nd chapter, we shaking ourselves from that dust, from that state of confusion. Through the spirit and power of you, how about Shem Yahweh That veil has became off our eyes and we have that spiritual eye salve. Now we can see out of that darkness. We can see the true light now. We see these other nations who are really our biblical enemies for what they really are. And we let them know according to the spirit what's going to happen to them when Yahweh Shah comes back and when our kingdom be set up in righteousness. So now we are a threat to these other nations because of that great awakening. And that's something that they hate. But at the end of the day, it's something they cannot do a damn thing about because it's biblical prophecy coming to pass. This is all spiritual divine intervention. And that leads me right back to the title of this lesson. Romans 11 chapter in the first verse. As you can see from the top, it says Israel is not cast away. So Romans 11 and 1, I say then, have the Most High cast away his people, the Most High will be it. So with the Israelites, we broke that covenant with our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, And we received that penalty or that breach of contract. So the Most High scattered us across the four corners of the world. We got downgraded. We got downplayed. We was that laughing stock and got made mockery of amongst these other nations. But through the process of time, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is waking up a remnant of his heritage to come back unto this knowledge. And through this knowledge, now we are seeing who our biblical enemies really are. All these other nations who had a plot and a downfall of us as a people. And now we're coming out strong and with boldness when we're out there on the highways and the byways and we are doing our different videos throughout the week to proclaim the word of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and letting these other nations know they're going to go in slavery when Yahweh Shai comes back. And he's going to set up his new righteous new world order. The kingdom of heaven which is going to be on earth. And we're going to be back on top again and they're going to be on the bottom. And that's biblical prophecy pursuant to the book of Deuteronomy the 30th chapter the 7th verse. How the curse is going to be taken off of us. It's going to cling onto these other nations. Especially Esau, Edom. So you best believe that these other nations are definitely scared when they hear this message that we are bringing out through the spirit. 
So that's when Esau Edom began with these elites. They're going to try to come down with that great wrath upon us because he know that he has but a short time. But we know through prophecy's sake, it's not going to happen all the way how Esau wants it to happen. Pursuant to the book of Job, the fifth chapter, the Mosai is going to disappoint the devices of the crafty. So with all of that, the Mosai is still having to cast away his people, which he foreknew. And with that, hope you all are edified. You all stay strong. Shalom.